Hello Booktube, it's Jay. I'm here for a review of Knight's Master by Kenneth Lee, a, oh man, I think it's a 19, let's see, here I am all prepared, and a 1978 uh, fantasy novel by Kenneth Lee, book one in her uh, Tales from the Flat Earth series. Um, this is a fantasy world and kind of the old times, back when the earth was flat, and uh, demons lurked below and came up and caused horrible havoc. And there's indifferent gods in the up underneath, and there's the poor human beings in in, in the middle. Uh, and this is where th this this um, this book, which is very kind of reminiscent of a kind of a thousand and one uh, thousand and one nights, uh, the Arabian Arabian Nights, uh, is uh, all centers around uh, the demon Prince Az Azram, uh, who uh, who has his cruel, cruel, uh, cruel joys and, uh, kind of mess, messing around with human beings. And even worse is when he actually falls in love with some of said human beings. Then, then the real, the real trouble begins. Um, it's, it's, um, one of these books where, uh, I think the writing is great. I think it's, it's absolutely great pulp writing, uh, uh, kind of gleeful in its rich kind of over the top sensuality and desire and, and just kind of a kind of a this kind of aggressive verve that uh Tanith Lee has. Um, um the book opens with uh the uh this this demon prince uh he's he's wandering on his wandering the earth he scoops he scoops up this baby boy and takes it back and raises it and he gets raised to great gets raised to adulthood and he kind of comes in every once in a while like he goes away for a couple of demon days and it's been like you know decades and suddenly there's this you know there's this there's this full grown human human there and uh they uh Azram falls in love with this this youth uh, or in lust maybe at the beginning here and it's like in this strange place, this demon palace, uh, part real, part mysterious, Azram pondered the adult virgin beauty of his great, of his guest once more, caressing the ivory body com and combing with his fingers the amber hair he ch had cherished. The youth lay dumbfounded by ecstasy beneath the demon's touch. He seemed lapped by the, the heatless burning of the garden fountain of fire. He was an instrument designed expressly for one master magi magician. Now the master tuned his body and woke the nervous strings of his flesh to an exquisite and suspenseful agony. Um, in the embrace um, of Azram was nothing brutish or even merely urgent. Uh, eternal time was on the side of his lovemaking, pleasures that thrilled and spilled over upon each other, measureless and prolonged, melted and remolded in the limitless furnace. The youth became at last only one throbbing sounding board for the mounting theme. Then a note of awful and marvelous a dimension was sounded within him, filling the, the waiting vessel he had become to the brim. The phallus of the demon, neither icy nor burning, entered him as a king enters a kingdom conquering, adoring this by right of surrender. The phallus was a tower which pierced the gate, the vitals of the citadel of his innermost inner world. The dark color of the pavilion merged with the darkness of those imminent and unclosing eyes that watched him with a terrible, cruel, unsparing tenderness. The body of the mortal leaped and flamed and shattered. In a million shudderings of unbelievable delight, the last chords of music, the cupola of the tower which had smashed the roof of the brain sky, he sank back in delirium with the taste of night, Azraham's mouth upon his own. So uh, yes, it's it's great writing if you uh, if you get my drift of great pulp writing. This is I, I it's kind of Robert E. Howard um, um, that kind of great great of your great of your writing now. I've said it's sort of I've I've said it's sort of a uh, kind of reminiscent of a thousand and one nights, but um, it's not like there's not like nested stories within nested stories. I think there's actually only one instance where there is actually oh let me tell you a story and then they kind of go into the story. Most of it is this kind of an interesting flowing thing where, um, for example, 
As I said, Azram starts off by picking up this babe, raising him to adulthood, falling in love with him. And then he makes him a, a flower wife. He grows him a flower wife uh, to try and kind of appease him because he's not very happy be being in the underworld. Um, and, you know, and so that story goes along. But then the next story is about the flower wife and her tears and those tears getting made into a necklace. And then the necklace getting escaping to the... Um, to the uh, mortal world and wreaking havoc in the mortal world. And then uh, at the very end, a blind poet um, gets, gets these, gets these, um, gets this necklace and gets a vision of the flower wife. So then there's an, an adventure of him going into the underworld to get the, um, the flower wife out, which, you know, there's very much Orpheus themes. There's very much, you know, gods tearing with humans kind of throughout that kind of a feel throughout the book. So, it's, there, there's always this kind of flowing, flowing thing of you going from one character to another character to another character story. Then oh, doubling back because hey, you know, this woman we followed her. This like there's a bridal thing where you know she, she turns down because oftentimes we'll have like book one, something that the demon did at the beginning causes the flow, and then book two, um, the demon prince again does something and the events flow out of it. It all kind of centers or uh, he is often he, the, this knight's, knight's master as Haran is very much the catalyst of all these stories and his fascination with the human world. And, and indeed um, it's one of these, it's one of these things where, you know, at one point they 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 do go up to the gods, but the gods do not care about human beings at all. God humans are just a mistake. They'll, they'll get washed away with whatever we do next. Uh, it's very much, it's, it's interesting that, this is a story about a demon who is the one who, with all his cruelty, with all his caprice, he is the one who is actually engaged with the human world. And that's actually what makes him an interesting character and the main character and gives the whole this whole book a nice, a lovely unity to it, even though it's traveling from different human to different human and you're, you're getting little sections of each of them. But um, his story and his fascination with human beings is actually what gives it a, a lovely unity to uh, to this to the story in the end you know this is an adventure fantasy book uh and where we're, we are other than the demon prince uh azhar i think that's how we say it um you don't really stay with any character too long so they're they're they can be a little bit of of, of a type um there's some ones that kind of spring out more than others uh there's one there's a one uh woman in here who um, but she's get she get her father dares to kind of uh, with his hubris to challenge uh, the demon prince who cruelly punishes him and uh, everybody's killed except for this one baby girl who gets maimed and ends up living with a hermit and you know scorned by the nobles shunned by the village ends up being raped um, that I guess you know for people who that is a kind of a deal breaker in a book that you know in this very small section she gets raped and then out of all this kind of hurt and anger, um, which it's funny because I, her, her human kind of point of kind of like despair of like, you know, I am nothing in this world. It was the most human. And then that last bit of real horribleness happens to her and she sort of dies as a human being and becomes this horrible instrument for revenge and a very kind of that way. And uh, she's a very, I mean, I guess she's a very active character. This isn't, this is Tanith Lee who, you know, it's interesting. The very start of the book is it's a male demon and a young male, uh, you know, being lovers. And uh, there's some subversions of what you kind of might, might expect from a fantasy book in the 70s. Uh, other things maybe you do expect in a fantasy book in the 70s. <laughs> that sensuality, that that uh, energy, uh, I think, is, something, is one of these lovely features of, of these books, that they can kind of break down these barriers that... So have some of some of them have actually come back up but um um so there's there's certain characters that you do get into but it's not terribly deep this is very much a story storytelling mode oftentimes the characters get referred to as like you know they go they can go great bits of like you know, oh this is just like the nameless babe at the beginning of the story and they only get their name he only gets his name actually after the lovemaking scene that you he you learn his name or um the daughter of this king who has fallen is maimed and has all this horrible stuff happen and is raped, she's always referred to as the king's daughter until basically there's that turning point where she takes her own her own horrible revenge and um, 
and then she gets her own name, which is interesting. Interesting in itself of interesting um, use use of conventions there by uh, Lee. Um, and uh, you know, as I said, this book has a wonderful unity to it. It's got its, the the ending um, truly. Um, the prince Azhar, prince demon Azhar, is at the beginning of the book, and he he's at the end. It's it is his story, and it, his it's a story about his fascination with human beings and what he's wrought and um, how he deals with it. How he deals with it, and it's one of these wings. Like I got to the end of the book, and I was like, it's a part of a series. Apparently, it's going to be like there's more books in it. I'm I'm semi curious from if anyone out there has actually read read any more of the books in the series because. I, this is sort of a perfect little thing in itself, and I can't imagine kind of wanting to go on with more. I do have the thing with Lee's, with Tanith Lee's stuff that like I'll read a book of hers and I'm like, wow, that was great, but it's like, and that was such rich chocolate and kind of over the top kind of pulp stuff that I'm like filled up for a while. I maybe I don't have this as much of an appetite for it as as I do. I, I'll, I'll come to it every once in a while and I'll enjoy myself and wow, that was fun and that was like oh beautiful and and gorgeous and over the top and exquisite and revenge and all this sort of stuff and I'll, I'll enjoy it. But then I'm like okay, and then I kind of go on to other stuff for a long time. I've got I've got <laughs> I, I I had you know. I have my things of of grabbing lots and lots of uh, of an author, which I, I've broken myself of. But Tantalee is definitely somebody who I collected a bunch of her stuff. But I'm seriously, I'm probably going to read one of these a year, if that, you know. And that's and I don't know what that is. That is, but uh, if, if you're in the mood and you and you need that chocolate, that pulp chocolate, uh, I would totally recommend uh, reading uh, the Knight's Master by Tantalee. More videos later.